What's up guys, Axis here, back with another tutorial on X Particles and Octane. Today we're going to be showing you how to create this stringy render. Uh, it's a crazy mesh, it's really cool, I quite like it. I'm going to be using Octane for the lighting, obviously you guys can use whatever you want. But I'm going to be using Octane. Uh, and before anyone comments, yes, I bought both these programs, okay? Do not ask me how to get these illegitimately because I bought both of them. God damn it. Right. Uh, and it wouldn't be an access video without a shameless plug. So 50% um, off the landscape kit for the first three hours of this video's release. Very, very good pack. A lot of good response. Uh, so yeah, if you guys want to check these out, I've got a bunch of tutorials for them. Um, and I use them in a lot of my projects. So if you guys want to check them out, 4K height maps and a bunch of different textures for each one, um, then check it out. Let's get into the tutorial. Uh, this is the final image. I would load up the scene file, but it takes so long to uh, actually mesh, which is it's quite annoying, but it's a really cool look. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this as like a motion kind of thing. I'd only do a still of this because it takes so long, but we're gonna emit from a uh, disc on this. So what we want to do is we wanna put the um, outer radius to around 290, 300, and then we'll have like 10 centimeters distance between each one because um, we want it to be hollow um, and then we're going to set this to Z minus if we do Z plus um, it will actually emit from the other side which is what we don't want so uh, let's create an X particle system uh, just up here in your little X particles tab and then uh, create an emitter uh, and then we're going to emit from an object instead of the default rectangle I'm going to change the emission uh, rate uh, after I've actually put in my disk, change the emission rate to 2500. Now, this is every second, I believe, or frame uh, per second. Yeah, right underneath it. Um, and then what we're going to do is we are going to bring in a bunch of different uh, modifiers. So let's bring in a turbulence, two of these. One of these is going to be set to a curl noise, the other being set to the standard. And we're going to set the strength to 500, strength of the curl noise to 50, and then we're going to add another modifier, again a motion modifier, uh, and we're going to add rotation, and I didn't touch this, so just leave that. Uh, and then we're going to add a trail, which we're also going to emit, um, which we're also going to mesh as, as well as the um, points. Uh, if I could bring back the... No, I can't. Uh, anyway, in the original image there's a bunch of different points. Um, and basically that's it, just trying to mesh the uh, emitter points as well as the trail. The trail kind of creates a stringy look. So to make the trail work we bring in the emitter into this. And then what we do is we add a Skinner object. Which is also a, a generator. And I switch this to a fluid. Uh, I've been using a lot of um, this. <laughs> I do not want to embarrass myself. Um, uh, yeah, I've been using a lot of this, but um, I decided to switch it up and use fluid, and it created a really nice effect. So that's what I'm going to be using here. Um, before I forget, I'm going to turn these on, and I'm going to put them to 90 and I think 86. I used 86 to 90. And the iterations, this can get really, really... Um, really intense on your CPU, um, so don't put it up too far. Um, it's basically just smoothing out the uh, the whole um, the mesh, so yeah, it looks really nice. Um, and the polygon size is basically the, the resolution. If you turn this down to, I'd say, below 1, you're done. Like, I mean, depending on what kind of PC you have. Uh, but I'm going to be using, using 3, which is relatively high in my opinion. But I think having a larger polygon size looks a lot better with this. Um, oh, and I almost forgot. Put the um, put the trail and the emitter into the object sources, uh, and then that's what it's going to emit from. So um, hopefully this will not blow up my PC. But uh, you can hide this. Just make sure you don't uncheck it. So in the middle. Okay. So yeah. It's already slowing down. I don't want to make this go too far because I know it's going to um, go really slow. Um, so I'm going to put the emitter, I mean the skinner down to about 6 or, or up to 6 I guess. Um, 
but first I'm gonna mess around with the um, the smoothing a bit and also gonna change this to triangles um, instead of quads uh, and I want to see if I can maybe put this down to like five or something actually that looks really nasty I'm not gonna bother uh, nine or ten I think um, and then I'm going to try bumping the iterations to 80. Now that will smooth out a lot more. Um, it doesn't really create the the kind of, um, I don't know, like, it doesn't make it look like there's many as many of these points, like round points, I guess. Uh, it smooths out a lot more. As you can see with 20, it kind of creates more of a full circle. I mean, it's not really a circle or a sphere, um, but you know, it's more of that. Um, so it's just dependent on what you're really going for. This is more of a, I'd say this is more unrealistic than having something that's smoother. I'd say in between 90, I mean 80 and, and 20 is kind of like the sweet spot. But I'm going to go for like 40, let's say. I'm just going to put my phone on silent. Um, and yeah, I think that'll be a good mix. Um, and then I'm going to put this to 6. Basically the polygon size uh, for the render uh, here is what's going to be shown in the live viewer. Uh, not the live viewer in the um, in the picture viewer when you when you render it out finally, but as you can see, it's just going to show what's here. It's not going to show the uh, the render result. That's just from the picture viewer, which is quite nice. Uh, but I'd also kind of like it to work in the picture viewer. Um, I mean the live viewer, just because um, large meshes don't really take that long to export. Um, I mean I don't know how you'd get that working. Now that I think about it. Um, anyway, you can hide the Skinner, and I'm going to hide the trail anyway, because like, it doesn't need to be seen. It just needs to be checked on. Um, so you can basically simulate all throughout this. Um, I think I went to frame 40 in the original composition. I don't think we're going to be able to... Ah. Precisionist. Uh, turn on the Skinner. Should take a little while. Um, see, that is that took a, a while, especially, you know, since it's quite a low poly um, mesh. I mean, it still looks cool, uh, granted, but um, it's not really the final result that I had, um, which is the one I preferred. This is probably more realistic as a normal fluid, I guess. I mean, it's not really like a water, but it's definitely more fluid-like. Uh, but I, I don't mind it looking unrealistic as long as it looks cool, in this case at least. Obviously, if you're going for something hyper-realistic, then this effect probably isn't it. Um, so, there we go. Uh, I didn't explain any of that, but, you know, if you've got Octane, you probably know how to zero out your camera. I created a camera, and then I zeroed out all the parameters other than Y, and obviously the, the scale. Um, and to make sure that the, um, the camera focuses on the correct point, what you could do is you can either select the focus by unchecking autofocus, turning this up to something ridiculous, and then selecting by doing control middle click. I have no idea what that would be on Mac. My, I guess it would be command middle click, but middle click is um, not really a thing. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I don't know how that works uh, on a Mac, because I, I don't have a Mac with a GPU. But yeah, um, you can either select the focus like that, or what I did in the original comp was I just got an area light which will put it into the middle. Uh, obviously it can't focus on anything because the mesh isn't in the middle currently. Um, I don't think, unless you uh, emitted it for a while, it wouldn't ever be in the middle. But what I do is I get a light, turn down the power to zero, turn down the general visibility to zero, and uncheck these if you want to be extra safe. And then we can turn back on, uh, you know, autofocus and it will focus on the center which is pretty nice um i use this for a lot a lot of projects um because you know sometimes the um, autofocus can be a bit temperamental okay um so now for the lighting what we're going to do is we're going to change this to path tracing make sure only have one gpu on um and from here what we can do is we can get a specular material um so just drag this drop onto the skinner or on the x particle system doesn't matter which um, and then I'm going to change this to specular so just drop down list or scroll down and we're going to add some uh, subsurface scattering so the scattering medium uh, is what I'm going to use for this there's like a billion uh, tutorials for subsurface scattering on YouTube so if you want to learn more about this then it's quite easy um, we've got the RGB spectrum which is basically um, just like a color palette 
and you can choose a color in here uh, and then what we can do is we can add a float 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 texture there we go basically this kind of decides how transparent the the, um, the material is in, in layman's terms um so something like this i, I want it to be quite see-through um i don't want it to obviously look like um it's just liquid i want it to kind of look like a mix um and as you can see light uh, light gets through certain parts like uh, you know thinner parts instead of denser parts uh, a lot easier which is a really really nice effect um, and then what we can add is we can actually add some color to this so we're gonna want to add a pinky a pinky red I really like that that kind of color something like this um, and then what we can do is we can turn either turn down this a bit um, which I mean that doesn't really make much of a difference or we can change down the uh, intensity or the density my bad um, which will, will make the the light travel through it more easily so color will be able to get through easily as well um, so something like that it's pretty nice I want it to be more closer to a white because you know you can see it's already really sensitive like that's that color is barely barely um you know it's nine percent it's nine percent uh pink pretty much um and it's it's really quite visible i mean i don't know if it's just because of the monitor i'm on if i drag it over eh, it's about the same to be honest um because this one's a bit darker it's not that accurate i mean none of my monitors are but the other ones are more and then we can add some post-processing so maybe 15 something like that um, I don't like to add too much, so maybe we could just go like 10. Uh, and turn on some camera imager. Uh, and what I, I really like turning on uh, neutral response, it makes it a bit bluey. Um, which, uh, the way I fix this on a lot of my scenes is I will get a plane, scale it all the way up, and then I'll change this material into a completely 100% white one. And then, since you have a white balance parameter, see, by default, I think it was like 9%, uh, 90 something percent white instead of 100. Um, so we drag this on, it's going to be pure white. And what we can do is we can go into the camera imager and select this color. Uh, in fact, wait, wait, wait. Turn down the, uh, the vignetting and then do it. And then make that white. So if something's blue in the background, if it's like a bluish color, then you can select the blue and it will become white pretty much. That's how white balance works. Um, again, in layman's terms, I'm no camera expert. Um, and the responses are also pretty cool. That looks quite cool, actually. I like that. That looks really bloody. <laughs> um, so I might just put this back further. I might use a plane in the first place. Um, and as you can see in the original one, I used a glossy, uh, glossy black material, which was nice. Uh, but I might, I might just stick with a white on this, um, and then I might also add some a, either some lights or b, uh, a HDRI environment, or even both, um, because you know both work. So I might just add maybe a studio HDRI, just some standard studio, uh, and then bump up the intensity to like three. Not too far. Two. Mm, no, don't. Maybe 1.3. Something like that. Uh, and keep in mind, if if the intensity is too much anyway, you can you can obviously just turn up the density and it'll reduce the amount of light that gets through here anyway. So, yeah. That's a really nice effect, though. Um, I really like that because you can see really clearly. Um, like you can zoom in on parts of this. And you can see, like at the edges, it gets white where the where it's at its thinnest point, which is so nice. I really like this. Um, I wonder what it looks like on the monitor. Not as nice, but you know, it's close. Um, thin lens. Maybe I want to turn down the aperture a bit. And we can also try reducing the skinner, but you know, this is a slippery slope. Uh, three takes so long. Um, it takes about a minute, I think, to actually load the. Um, load the mesh so I'd watch out with that um, but yeah this is this is looking pretty nice I really like this 
um, and also obviously you can add lights into this and I can show you how to you know kind of just focus the light on one point and it will you know basically look completely white because there's so much light going through it and um, can turn the invisibility maybe if I rotate it so yeah it's kind of like half and half you can see like if when when a light's going through it it's just kind of you know there's less pink there's more white which is a really nice effect uh, and in the original I did like an orangey effect orangey color which was nice as well so um yeah and for render settings again I wouldn't recommend doing this for uh, a motion piece uh, because a path tracing takes ages and b path tracing takes even longer when you're using uh, subsurface scattering um, but you know if you've got like uh, 10 titans or whatever um, you know you can turn down cost, uh, caustic blur because there is barely any shadows in the scene so maybe it's point two. Um, also uh, you can use some uh, hot pixel removal people seem to uh, just turn this down all the way and just assume oh look it's, it's all pixely it's all nasty this is pretty much just like using denoiser in After Effects. It basically trades a bit of blur for, you know, a pixel or, or pixelation, I guess, uh, or grain. Um, and I use this so much because um, you can easily, you know, reduce like a thousand samples and, you know, um, it will look the same uh, as if, uh, you know, without using it. Oh, I don't know how to explain it. Anyway, um, reducing this is just is good, but just don't reduce it too much. The max I would use is 0.5. Uh, and that's an extreme uh, situation, so 0 0.7, 0 0.8, something like that should look fine. Um, anything else? Uh, no, that's it. It is a bit overexposed, that's true, but I can just reduce the uh, gamma a bit and it looks a bit more uh, controlled than normal. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. That's the basis of the uh, X particles effect I did. I'm uh, sorry for dragging this on. But yeah, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments. If you have any tutorial ideas, I'd be happy to take suggestions. Uh, I really want to start be more active on this channel. And yeah, remember to check out that, uh, <laughs> that landscape pack though. See you next video.